everyone. Today we're going to get started by adding a store to metric. Uh, the first thing you're going to see is this add a store page and you're going to be asked for the name of your company. Uh, basically how it works in metric is you can have multiple stores under one company and you actually only pay the price based on the company's combined vo volume. So if you had five stores each with 50 orders a month, uh, you'd only be charged once for the combined volume, which is 250 orders, uh, rather than paying for each store individually. Uh, so I'm just going to name the company Petlight Incorporated. And then you're going to be asked for the URL of your store. So in this case, I'm adding a demo store to this URL, and I'm going to click Add Store. At that point, Metric just checks that your store uh, has a recent version of WooCommerce that it can connect with and that it's accessible by Metric. Uh, at that point, if you get this screen, you're ready to go. So you can click Connect, and it'll take you to your site to give Metric permission to access your data. So you can see this is actually on the WooCommerce store. Uh, and I'm already logged in, but if you weren't, it would ask you to log in. And once you click Approve, behind the scenes, your store is going to give Metric access. So I'm going to click Approve. And then Metric's going to run some extra tests just to make sure, again, it can access everything that it needs to. Then you're going to be asked uh, to confirm the store name and the currency. Uh, it's automatically detecting the currency of your store that's set in the WooCommerce settings. But if that's wrong, you can just change it. Then you're going to be asked to install the Metric Hello plugin. Now, technically, Metric connects your site behind the scenes through WooCommerce's built-in API. Uh, but just to add some extra features, there's also a small plugin that you're asked to install. Uh, all you have to do is click the Install It button. Uh, you might not be able to see this, but behind the scenes, it's just opening up a pop-up on my site. Um, I might just copy it in here so you can see it. Where basically, I can just click Install. And this is, again, on my site. and then activate it. Now I'm just going to go back to metric to finish the process. Again, I'll just say I've confirmed it and then just say I've installed it. Now at that point, behind the scenes, uh, metric is getting everything ready to connect to your store and start processing all your data. Uh, so you just need to wait a moment. And then we're good to go. Uh, at this point, you're given the chance to set up your team while it's importing the store. And depending on the size of your store, this can take anything from a minute to an hour to a few hours. It really just depends how big you are. Uh, just for a ballpark figure, this store has 500 orders, and I'm estimating that it's going to take probably about 10 minutes. Uh, so at this point, I can now invite my team. So I might invite you know, someone else on my team. And you can give them a role. Uh, analysts basically gives them access to all the reports, but they can't really update any orders or anything like that. Uh, while editor can do a lot more, they can update orders, they can see everything, um, but they can't add team members or change the settings. Admin is kind of at your level where they can do pretty much everything besides touch the billing for the overall company. Uh, and Packer and Packer Read, these are roles that give them limited access, so they can't see any reports, they can't export any data but they're able to look at orders, look at customers. If they're a packer, they can update statuses and add notes. Packer read can't even do that. It can really just see, see the orders, see the customers, but that's it. Uh, by the way, it, you might notice that it's at 10% and not moving. Uh, just at the start, it can be processing some things, so that can take a little time to move. Okay, so I'm just going to invite this user as an analyst. Great. And then I'm going to skip to the next step. Uh, at this point, you can create a digest. Now, digests are automatic emails and optionally Slack messages that kind of just give you a report, a summary of how your store has been performing over the previous period. So if I set up a email digest that went to Bryce and Metric and I made it uh, daily, it would send an email every day, only if there's actually been activity in the past day. Um, we don't want to send you an email that just says nothing happened. So maybe you want to do a weekly one and you want to go Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, and at that point, it's going to just summarize the whole week before.
there's no pressure to create these during the setup. You can create, keep creating them if you want. You can even connect Slack. Uh, also, you can just do this after the store has already been set up. And there are a couple of different types of digests. A general one uh, kind of just gives a overview of everything while products focus on individual products. If you're using WooCommerce subscriptions, you have the ability to create a subscriptions digest, which will give you some stats like your monthly recurring revenue, your renewal figures. We're going to go to the next step, which is integrations. This gives you a chance to connect um, a few integrations. This, this is always changing. There might be more by the time you're setting up your metric store. Uh, but some of them include Slack, Google Analytics, uh, some support platforms. The Slack one is really useful for digest, while Google Analytics gives you the chance to see conversion rates and visitors and other stats from Google within metric. I'm not going to do any of that right now, though, and I'll save that for another video. Finally, the settings just gives you a chance to review uh, your report settings. Uh, one of the most useful ones is down here, which order statuses should be excluded from reports. So it gives you the chance to say, maybe I have a custom status and that's like a um, pending, maybe pending review where our team wants to review the order before we actually count it as a real order, maybe for fraud reasons. If you had that custom status there, you could choose to exclude it and completely ignore it from reports. Uh, by default, it's just going to exclude failed, canceled, and pending orders. Maybe for us, we don't want to even count processing or on hold. Um, so we can just check that and it'll exclude them. And then back to the import page, uh, where it's just going to show you the progress of the import. And as soon as it's done, it'll take you to the dashboard. If you want, you can just close this window. And then as soon as it's done, uh, it'll send you an email and then you can access the dashboard.